a leper came to Jesus beseeching him, and kneeling said to him, If you will, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. I will be clean. <sighs> and immediately the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. Jesus sternly charged him and sent him away at once. See that you say nothing to anyone but go. Show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded for a proof to the people. But he went out and began to talk freely about it and to spread the news so that Jesus could no longer openly enter a town but was out in the country and people came to him from every quarter. A leper came to him and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched the leper, and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. If we come to our divine Lord with faith, kneel down before him and present our need to him, then we also will receive the same response given to this leper, I do will it, be made clean. These words should give us hope in the midst of any and every challenge in life. What is it that our Lord wills for you? What is it that He desires to make clean in your life? This story of the leper coming to Jesus does not mean that our Lord will grant any and every request we bring to Him. Instead, it reveals that he wills to make us clean of that which afflicts us the most. Leprosy in this story should be seen as a symbol of the spiritual ills that afflict your soul. First and foremost, it should be seen as a symbol of the sin in your life that has become habitual and slowly does great damage to your soul. At that time, leprosy not only caused grave physical damage to a person, but it also had the effect of isolating them from the community. They had to live apart from others who did not have the disease, and if they came near others, they had to show they were lepers by certain external signs so that people would not come in contact with them. Thus, leprosy had both personal and communal ramifications. The same is true with many habitual sins. Sin does damage to our souls, but it also affects our relationships. For example, a person who is habitually harsh, judgmental, sarcastic, or the like will experience the ill effects of these sins in their relationships. Returning to the statement of Jesus above, consider that sin which not only afflicts your soul the most, but also your relationships. To that sin, Jesus wishes to say to you, Be made clean. He wants to strengthen your relationship by cleansing the sin within your soul. And all it takes for Him to do that is for you to turn to Him on your knees and to present your sin to Him. This is especially true within the sacrament of reconciliation. Reflect today upon your closest relationships in life, and then consider which of your sins most directly hurts those relationships. Whatever comes to mind, you can be certain that Jesus wants to rid you of that spiritual leprosy within your soul. Let us pray. My divine Lord, help me to see that which is within me that most harms my relationships with others. Help me to see that which causes isolation and hurt. 
Give me the humility to see this and the trust I need to turn to you to confess it and seek your healing. You and you alone can free me from my sin, so I turn to you in confidence and surrender. With faith, I also await your healing words. I do will it. Be made clean. Jesus, I trust in you. <laughs> 